In this video, we're going to learn how to express logic in our HTML using conditions and loops. Sometimes in our code, we need to output different HTML depending on a condition. For instance, if we have a side nav that we want to toggle between hidden and shown, we'll first need to check a condition and then either hide or show it depending on that condition. So how do we do this with Svelte? To do this, we use what's known as conditional statements or if else statements. So let's start off with a super basic example. Let's start by declaring a variable product, which will be an object with the product's name, t-shirt, and quantity, which will begin as zero. Next, let's add a function called increment, which will add one to quantity anytime it's called. Now we also need to add a button that will call increment anytime it's clicked. And I'm also going to display the product name and count in a header above of our button. Let's add a div with some text that will alert the user when the product quantity is greater than 10. Here, we only want to show this div when the value of quantity exceeds 10. So to conditionally render some markup with Svelte, we can simply wrap it in an if block. So in our current example, we would add this. Now let's test this out. If we head into our browser and click the button a ton of times, we see the div appear once quantity reaches 11. Now in this example, we don't see anything until quantity is greater than 10, but what if we want to display something else if quantity is not greater than 10? Since these two conditions are mutually exclusive, meaning quantity is either greater than 10 or not, it can't be both, we can do this using an else block before closing our if block. So in our code, we would simply add this. Now testing this in our browser once again, we see the div displaying only a few items left in stock until quantity reaches 11, at which point the other div is displayed. But what if we want to take this a step further and display yet another div if quantity is zero? With Svelte, multiple conditions can be chained together using else if. So in our example, we would add this. And if we once again test this in our browser, we see three different alerts displayed depending on whether quantity is zero, greater than zero but less than or equal to 10, or greater than 10. Looking back at our code, the syntax probably feels unfamiliar, so let's go over it. A pound character always indicates a block opening tag. A slash character always indicates a block closing tag. And a colon, as in colon else, indicates a block continuation tag. Thankfully, this is almost all the unique syntax that Svelte adds to HTML, and the same block syntax is used to loop over a list of data. So let's learn how to do that. First, let's create an array called products containing multiple product objects, each with a name and quantity. Now, in order to iterate through this array and display the name of each product, we will once again use our block syntax, this time using an each block. So our code will look like the following. Here, we've created an each block, which will loop through our array. In this example, the expression products is our array, but it can be any array or array-like object. So basically anything that has a length property and product is the alias for each item in our products array. And this alias can be anything we like it to be. So we could just as easily say each products as P or each products as hello. We can also get the current index as a second argument like this. Now, by default, anytime you modify the value of an each block, it will add and remove items at the end of the block and update any values that have changed, which oftentimes isn't really what you want. This is easier to show than explain. So let's add a checkbox in this each block, as well as a button above that calls the method add product when it's clicked. And this method will just add a new product to our products array. Now in the browser, I'm going to check the first checkbox alongside our t-shirt product, and I'm going to click our button. And now we see the checked checkbox is now aligned to our new product, cup, not our t-shirt product. So what's happening is the DOM is adding a new node and then updating each node to match our each block. Instead, we want to add a new DOM node and then leave the others unaffected. We can do this by keying our each block. To avoid this issue, it's good practice to always specify a unique identifier or a key for each element within our array when working with each blocks. So in our example, let's add parentheses after our index and within it, I'll put product.name. Now each item in our array has its own unique key. In this case, the unique identifier for each item is the item's name. And this works because each item's name is different. 
But if there were two items with the same name, this would not work. Each key must be unique. So why is it important to carry each box? Svelte can use the key to keep track of which DOM element is connected to which item in the array. Now each block is linked under the hood with a specific piece of data in the array. So if we check one of these checkboxes and click our button, we see that the correct checkbox is still checked. This is an easy step to skip over, but keying your each blocks is a really good habit to get into. So that sums up this video. I'll see you in the next video where we'll add some style to our app using CSS.